Hey guys, what is going on? This is iAppleGeek. And in this video, I want to clear up some confusion and bring you guys some information about Cydia Extender, some things going on with Luca Tedesco, and the iOS 10 jailbreak status. Luca Tedesco is back, so is Sark with his Cydia Impactor update, and Cydia Extender which I will get into more in detail here in a minute. All right, so first things first, I do wanna thank you guys for the support you've given to me on this channel. I am very grateful. It has allowed me to upgrade the lighting back here as well as this table, some other things in the background. Also for helping me get to 10,000 subscribers. That is amazing. So I wanna ask you guys in this video, what would you like me to do for a special 10,000 subscribers video? I have come up with a couple of ideas, but I want to hear from you guys. If you have any questions, personal questions to ask me, leave them in the comments. That would be great. And if you have any video ideas, that would be sweet. But anyways, let's get into the video. So a lot of people have been wondering about iOS 10.3 because it seems to have brought a very somewhat significant update even though Apple hasn't really made a huge deal about it. It does introduce the Apple file system, which is like a quicker and more condensed way to store media on your device. That is awesome. That way you'd have more storage, it'd be faster. It could pose a problem for downgrading. But with that aside, I did want to talk about the current jailbreak situation for that firmware. But before I get to that, I want to quickly discuss Cydia Extender because a lot of people have been confused on what Cydia Extender is. Now recently, Sarek did release a new version of Cydia Impactor, version 09.39, and it fixes an error on Windows computers you guys might have seen. If you try to re-sign Yalu after 7 days and sometimes it'll give you an error, it won't do that anymore. And it also includes an option to install Cydia Extender. Now, Sarek knows that there's a lot of confusion around this as well. And he says Cydia Extender isn't what many are assuming and it seems to require a paid developer account to install, which I failed to notice. Sigh. So what is he talking about? What does this all mean? Well, Cydia Extender is a tool that is meant for you to be able to sign the Yango 102 application on your jailbroken iOS 10 device. And as we know, every seven days this thing will expire and you got to plug it back into your computer and run the whole thing to install this again so that when you reboot you're not stuck in a non jailbroken mode. City Extender was meant to fix that. However, as Sarek said here that he had failed to notice it doesn't work with normal Apple IDs. So the whole theory is you sign it one time with your Apple ID and then it would be on your device forever because you can just use City Extender to reinstall it every time it expires. However, like Sarek says, it does not work unless you have a paid developer Apple ID, which by the way, costs a hundred US dollars. Sarek also said to the extent which this project was potentially exciting, it essentially became a complete failure five minutes after release. So I'm just going to go to bed and leave it all very vague. Now this is very interesting because Sarek actually had some help in building Cydia Extender, someone that he did not name. And in this comment on Reddit, he says that, and note that Cydia Extender is not the aforementioned thing I wanted to build that got overly delegated to someone more qualified than me who got code named Voldemort. Who is this Voldemort? Now, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm almost certain that it's Luca Tedesco. Luca Tedesco on Twitter did mention that he was Sarek's mystery man for his thing, but didn't find time to pull it off. Now I have time and one day, so I'd rather do it JB Me style. If Luca Tedesco has the correct resources and tools and the time to build a jailbreak, he will do it. If you guys remember a little while back, he actually released a tool for iOS 9.3.3. It's basically a web version of the Yangu app. And if you were on 9.3.3, you can actually just hit go and it will re-enable the jailbreak so you didn't have to go and install the Pangu app. He has found yet another Safari exploit that was not fixed in iOS 10.2 and has been trying to exploit this to give us a jailbreak, just like jailbreak me back in the day. In another tweet, Luca does say as a solution to the 7 days thing, JBB 102 may become a thing when 10.3 gets released. Basically, when 10.3 comes out and patches the 10.2 jailbreak, those of us still on 10.2 will get a similar exploit 
for which iOS 9.3 received. That way we don't actually have to use the Yangu app to re-enable the jailbreak every time. Just come to this website, hit go, and it would be done. A lot of people are getting this confused with an untethered jailbreak over the air, which is not possible. As Luca said here, I forgot that Yangu's kernel exploit must run as 32-bit or with a crafted 64-bit Mako to work. So JBME 102 canceled. What I'm inferring from this is that iOS 10.2 can be exploited through Safari. However, because of the new devices, Apple's new processors, like in the iPhone SE or the iPod Touch 6, the iPhone 7, especially the iPhone 7, that prohibits him from running a boot ROM exploit. And if you don't know, a boot ROM exploit is key for your device when it's turning on. Basically, it determines whether your device will go into a jailbroken state. It makes or breaks the jailbreak. Now, this brings me to a very big word, the untetherer. So a developer on Twitter actually posted these pictures. I do not believe this and I recommend you guys don't believe it as well. So basically by posting this, he's saying that he has a solution for us to make the semi-untethered jailbreak on iOS 10.2 fully untethered. Basically you can reboot without any worrying about a Yahoo app or hitting go every time. So as you guys can see on this application, it says, this application will install an untethered package for 10.1 through 10.2, utilizing two kernel exploits by that guy. And after the tool has ran on the device, you can see that untether installed. And I don't believe this because first of all, there is no video proof. And second of all, no legitimate developer has come out and confirmed this. So this guy totally new to the community. I've never heard of him before. This is probably a fake guys. Don't believe it even though it looks really convincing in these photographs. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments. Also, don't forget any video ideas for a 10K sub special, be sure to let me know as well. Or if you guys are interested in a live stream, do let me know, that would be awesome. Again, thank you guys so much for the support and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.